Hey everybody, Haku here with my review for Tower of God, uh, chapter 376 or season 2 episode 296. Uh, I just got home, it's like 7 something p.m. Trying to record this and get it posted before bed. Sorry if it's a bit late, but sticking with the schedule of having this on Tuesdays now. Some unforeseen circumstances have already been screwing with that schedule, but I'm pushing through it alright. So this week might still be a little screwy. Um, but yeah, either way... Uh, this chapter is kind of odd in that, you know, there are only like two or three real topics to go over, but there's kind of a lot within those things. Um, we really got a lot this chapter, even though it doesn't seem like it. it and even my notes, there's not that much, but uh, there was a lot of good discussion comments and uh, stuff from yesterday's video, and I'm assuming there will be with this video too. So in like two days when we have the hot Q&A, that's probably going to have a lot of, um, I'm telling you now, like, in case you want to be able to get in on that, or um, if you want to watch that in two days, the hot q and is probably going to have a massive Tower of God section and discussion this time. Um, so yeah, either way, let's talk about this one part by part. Um, so Kunak Ro Agnes has the sworn enemy basically trapped. Uh, we know he's cut off his the we he's cut him off from the sides and from above with the lighthouse and the ice. So now he's kind of trapped where the attack only needs to go one direction straight at him. And Agro Agnes brings up, I know your weakness because you're essentially old bomb. Uh, you're not that durable. So one hit should probably take you out if I can actually get a strong hit off on you. Uh, and then I love Rack showing up, being like, look, I did something too, and he has stone arms. He's like, I just ate some rocks, and now this happened. Uh, and I, I love the two of them going back and forth and bickering, like Agaragnus will, like, spit him out. This is, this is weird. This isn't good. Um, so I love their interactions with each other. Edwan jumps in and asks Rack <clears throat> about the native ones. He's like, oh, you're a native one, aren't you? And Rack has no idea what any of that means. Uh, so we get some exposition. Edwan explains that they are dis the descendants of some ancient giant, maybe? He's, at least in the English translation, which is sometimes kind of off, um, he's like, uh, they're the descendants of an ancient, I mean a giant, and uh, I don't know if that was supposed to be hinting at him holding something back or hiding something, or if he was just sort of, uh, making what he was trying to talk about more clear. No idea. So descendants of an ancient giant and he splits his body into children. Or maybe he was about to say something like an ancient like an ancient guardian or something who split himself apart. The descendants of an actual guardian maybe. I don't know. I maybe it could be literally anything or the translation could just be bad. Who knows? Um so he split his body into five quote-unquote children, um, and the children, the descendants of this ancient giant, could control the elements and change form, uh, like kind of becoming the elements, kind of, and this light, gr this light comes out of them when they do it. So it's kind of like what Rack is doing now, and uh, they bring up pe people being able to do that. Ned wants like maybe they have, some, or they probably have some of that. Uh, the giant's blood mixed in with them somewhere. Uh, and that made me think, I think we've seen characters like that. I would say the Dirt, I don't remember their names, but the Dirt and the Steel Brothers, those guys. Was his name Hess or something like that? The Dirt guy had an H name, I think. Um, something, something simple, one syllable starts with an H like that, I think. Um, so yeah, there was him, and then the uh, Steel guy was his brother, and they could turn into those elements. Um, so I'm thinking maybe they are, uh, I guess, related to Rack in some long roundabout way, technically, then. Uh, but Edwan says that Rack is like a direct descendant, because instead of uh, turning into it, he brings the element to him, just like the ones that Edwan knew from back in the day, because some of them traveled with him back in the day when they were the Ten Warriors and all that. But he thinks to himself that Zahard on the outside after becoming king and stuff, or maybe not necessarily after becoming king, but after Edwan's knowledge of him up to this point, at some point Zahard on the outside basically genocided them. He, uh, and they mention a curse, but the way he says it seems like, oh, he cursed them all to die. Um, and then they all died. So it's surprising that one would still be alive whatsoever. So uh, I think the whole curse thing doesn't necessarily mean that Rack is cursed. 
necessarily, but it means he thought that they were all cursed and the curse was death. And since Rack isn't dead, he's either overcome the curse somehow, the curse isn't what he thought it was, um, there's just some way around that. Uh, I love the scene with Rack where he's like, this is all too confusing. Give me, just teach me how to use this. Give me power. I love him just reaching out his stubby little chibi hands yelling, give me power. Um, but Edwan also mentions to him that Rack is weak compared to what Edwan remembers those members being like. Because Edwan's like, I don't know how to teach you. All of them were super strong and knew what they were doing. So I really, really like that, and I think it's great that Rack is weak compared to them, because that means that Rack has a ton of potential to grow. He can grow to be like them. Rack is the avatar at this point, pretty much. Um, then uh, the sworn enemy escapes and tries to attack Bomb. Uh, Bomb breaks out a new attack, Endless Sky, and I think it's important seeing him use Endless Sky because it's an original move. We've never, at least to my knowledge, we've never seen Bomb use an original move. All of his moves are either based off of moves he was hit with and absorbed, or they're based on the techniques that were taught to him by Yu Han Sung and Ha Jin Sung. So uh, there is that. Then, um, so I thought that was important, just that Bomb had an original move, because uh, that's one of the first times I think we've ever seen that, um, if not the first time we've ever seen an original move from him. Uh, but then we see that the sworn enemy is an embodiment of Bomb's feelings from back then when he was quote unquote Viol, even though he still is Viol, really. Because um, I'm pretty sure that's his real, actual name. <laughs> but either way. Uh, and I love the feelings where he's like, I fought hard alone to try to protect all of you, to try to save all of you, and now you want me to go away. So uh, I really did like sworn enemy Bomb here. Um, but the big thing here is that Bomb learns to accept that part of himself. Uh, and it was a big, huge character development, pa not like a power power up, but a character development power up for Bomb. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, you know, Bomb sort of mentions that that was the most painful part of his life because when he was alone before that time, he didn't really have friends, so he hated being alone, but he didn't know what he was missing. Him being alone as Viol after he had already made friends was a million times worse. That was the worst part of his life. Uh, and I like the the juxtaposition they're kind of making here with long hair and short hair Bomb, where you have the original Bomb from his backstory with long hair all alone, and then Viol, even though he's not physically alone, Viol felt all alone and he was when Bomb had long hair. And now Short Hair Bomb was in Volume 1 when he met people and made friends. And then he gets Short Hair back later on when he is reunited with those original friends. So I really, really like that juxta juxtaposition that didn't really all come together until now. And uh, it's always been there, but now it's finally come to a head. Um, then he absorbs this sworn enemy, which is important because Edwan makes note of it. And I think that that is telling us his quality. We know he can shape Shinsu into the orb, and that's his weapon. But his quality, somebody brought up that I had mentioned. Sorry, up. I'll, I'll be discussing all the comments and stuff in the Q and A, so you'll get the credit there. But I, there were so many good comments that I forget who all of which one of you said which. Um, but one of you said, you know, I had said before that I thought Bomb's quality might be absorption or propagation. And when I was saying absorption, I was thinking more of, I guess this is technically in the physical sense, but I was thinking more of the sense of he's just going to suck in Shinsu from around him to power up, or he's going to just suck in Shinsu in general. Uh, that's what I was thinking for absorption, but absorption makes so much sense now, and now I am convinced that's 100% his quality, because not only did he absorb the... Um, the Shinsu that was the sworn enemy, but we've seen him absorb powers. Every time he gets hit with a power, he absorbs that and is able to use it. He absorbed the Red Thrissa, though technically that might be the Red Thrissa jumping into him, not necessarily him doing something. Uh, he absorbed the souls that, uh, what was it, uh, Albelda led into him. Uh, and then, the biggest part that looking back on stuff made me kind of confirm it to myself, when we see Bomb, I, I believe it's the second or third time when he's trying to do the training with the God of Guardians and we're seeing the blue demon inside of him and stuff, 
the sun is his true power and the sun is what absorbed all the souls of those people and the sun is trying to absorb the blue demon. So the sun, Bomb's true power, is absorbing things. So all of this coming together, I am convinced now that Bomb's quality of abs absorption. Um, then the very end, extremely surprising, uh, we have the glitch room and Huang visits a Mazano with air signs all around him. And uh, a couple of you asked what I thought about that, and I think I think it was just a design choice because it looks kind of cool. But if I were to try to make some logic of it in the st sense of the story, maybe the air signs are around him because Mazano, when it comes to raw power, like Zahard and Bomb are both powerful too, but when it comes to raw power, maybe he is just so friggin' strong that the system can't really... Like, there, there aren't values high enough in the data system to calculate how strong he is or something, maybe. Maybe he's so strong that his data is kind of somewhat corrupt or fragile because of that. Um, so yeah, if I were to give some logic to why there are error signs around it, maybe it's because Mazano is just so damn strong. Uh, and one thing this also made me think... This doesn't really count much for this arc because I'm super, super excited about it because it's young Mazano. Uh, but it kind of made me think, we've had Mazano a friggin' ton lately. And it, it's like, we keep seeing him so much that I, I'm i getting scared that if we see Mazano arc after arc after arc, eventually um, we're going to become kind of numb to it and be like, oh, it's just Mazano again. It's not really that exciting. Uh, but this here... Still got me super, super excited because, I one, I didn't predict it whatsoever. I did not think Bonzano would be in this arc. I didn't know he ever went to the hidden floor. And uh, secondly, just because it's young Mazano, we haven't really seen young Mazano interact with Bomb or the rest of the cast. Um, before wrapping up some general thoughts, we have stuff in the blog, which I thought was really, really good. We're in the blog this week. See you explained what the story, like why the sworn enemies were there story-wise, like what the story of the sworn enemy was supposed to be. The story of the sworn enemy was supposed to be that Bomb is still Viol, but he's been trying to erase that. He's been trying to erase that he was Viol. He's been trying to forget about him being Viol. Uh, so the story was to show the internal growth of Bomb accepting his human and lonely side, accepting who he still is but has been trying to hide from and I think that's great because we saw that in name hunt station where he had trouble even wearing the wig and he had the good conversation on the floating thing with Kuhn where he was just really really unsure about even calling himself a viol anymore so I really really like to show just like the way they're showing like just in a couple of arcs uh two or three real arcs um that he's grown from that into being able to accept that, yeah, I'm Veal, but I'm still Bomb. We're all me. Um, so I thought that was great. Chapter as a whole, I thought it was a great wrap-up for the story of the Sworn Enemy uh, and the whole reason it was there. We're going to probably still have some cool Sworn Enemy stuff, I hope, but this was the main point of it being there narrative-wise. Um, I also like the new concept concept introduced for Rack. I tried to put concept and Rack together. Um, I like that. Like I said in the reaction, a little special snowflakey, but I don't really mind because it gives Rack something cool to do and it gives him a lot of future potential. Uh, so I'm super happy with that. Rack is basically the avatar. Good enough. Uh, and then Mazano showing up, to me, completely changes the arc. Because what I was thinking of the arc, I thought we were running towards the end of it. We were probably going to see some stuff with Rachel trying to get the mirror or whatever. We were going to see Bomb fight Zahard, and eventually those storylines would come together, and it would end. But now that we see Huang maybe possibly working with Mazano, maybe against Zahard, I think that Mazano being here in general, whether he works for Zahard or is like a third party in this, it changes the entire narrative that was happening. So uh, that's a huge surprise, and it adds a lot of uh, excitement back in the arc for me, even though I was already enjoying it. So, uh, yeah, this was a really, really great chapter. I'd give it... I, I struggled with what to score it. I'd give it 9.25 Lonely Selves out of 10, because it was really, really good, especially the feelsy bits and when you can... Uh, 
when we see that Bomb is actually getting some good character development here. So uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way this chapter turned out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like if you did like it, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this week's chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Like I said, already have a ton of comments I want to use from the hot Q&A from last week and from the reaction. And uh, commenting down there, I'll probably put some more from this video in there. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of discussion in a couple days if you want to watch that too. So uh, yeah, that I guess that leads me into subscribe for more Tower of God and much more on the channel. Um, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And if you want to link to our Discord server uh, to talk with me or more of us there, then just ask and I can give you a link to that. Uh, that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.